A very good morning, good evening and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to another episode here on the Life Signatures Radio. It's a daily podcast, a daily show on uh, the subjects of purpose, productivity and resilience. For the most part, it's single hosted and I don't do an interview with people, but that might change. Of course, I used to do that from time to time. But because of logistics, uh, things did change. Given that it's a daily show, it's a different thing altogether. And uh, right now we are in the middle of a series. We're talking about the subject of reputation. Talking about reputation. We've been doing that for quite a while now. And uh, today we're going to come to a conclusion on a small series within the big series where we're talking about the seven ways you can actually disfigure your reputation. But uh, we're not through by any long shot on the subject matter of reputation today. Let us look at the seventh way you can disfigure your reputation. Why are we doing this? So that we can warn ourselves and we can be a lot and that we don't do it. Remember, your reputation is currency on the face of the earth. It's sometimes even much more currency than liquid cash or any other assets that you might be having. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. So finally, ladies and gentlemen, we do come to a close of uh, this mini-series within the larger series. We've been talking about what are the seven ways you could disfigure your reputation. Of course, they are not necessarily just seven ways. Uh, you might find there are many other ways you can be able to disfigure. But these, I think, are the most common or these are the most potent that I've uh, curated and uh, created for you now the first one is this a little deviation from your values value systems we have values that we stand for either we have stated those values or we haven't stated them but let me tell you something you appear in this world and you transact in this world strongly based on your value system whether you know it or not there's some things you just like there's some things you hate and you make decisions and you make communications and transactions and exchanges and you do life in this world based on that value system now when you do that consistently the value system is identified with you and what happens is that we make an expectation on your value system so we make an expectation on the value system of people like td jakes because we know that they stand for this and they stand for that and we wouldn't expect them in a million million years to be caught up for example in a homosexual orgy with someone called uh, uh, p diddy now p diddy we might know or might think that that is his you know his that's his value his value system allows him to have orgies you, you get what i'm saying so if you deviate from your value system at one point in time, and I'm not saying that T.D. Jakes did that, there's an accusation that is going on. When you deviate from your value system that we know, whether your value system is A, B, C, D, whether it's black or white, it's pink, it doesn't matter the color. As long as you deviate from the value system that you've subscribed to or ascribed to and you've stood on for years on end and we know you by that, you change it, You've changed our ex expectations of you. We don't know you anymore. Your reputation has gone south. That's the first thing. Secondly, if you're going to disfigure your reputation, you are going to have a little overlooking on your promises. Your promise is your word. 
Your word is your bond. You keep your word and you remain in that high regard in terms of the reputation that people are giving you. But you go away from your word, which is your promise. Now we do not know what to expect from you anymore. We don't know who you are. We don't know what you're saying is true. We don't know what you're going to, what, what you're committing to do. You, we don't know if you'll do it or not. We can't even waste time, you know, looking forward to seeing you fulfilling your promises because your reputation has already been sold. You said you're going to do it. You did not do it. I cannot trust you. You, you've not paid your landlord and, 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 uh, you, you have not communicated about it. They were expecting you. That's the promise that you did when you signed up the papers. You said you're going to be paying at a, a particular point in time X amount of money. And you haven't done that. Now they cannot continue having a relationship with you because they do not know. Your reputation is on the line. It's spoiled. You could have done something before you knew, when you knew that you, you're not going to be able to fulfill your end of the bargain. Could keep your promise. You, you could have done something. You could have stated that things are, you know, not the same that I expected way before time. Not two weeks after the deadline. So when you keep the promises that you kept, I mean the promises that you broken, when you don't keep your promises, your reputation goes down. Thirdly, when you are slacking on your capacity or your potential, when we know that you are capable of doing a b c and d and we don't see you day in and day out doing a b c and d we number one become so disappointed with you we see that you are a waste of life you are also a waste of time we see that you're average we see that you're mediocre we see that you don't care about you and therefore we basically cannot have your reputation held in high regard in our hearts and in our in our psyches in our minds, no, that guy, no, Mm-mm. he's unserious, he is lazy, she's unserious, she's lazy, leave her alone. Why? Because we know. You see, it's another thing for us to know that you're not able to do it. You're incapable of doing A, B, C, and D. We know that. We will not even, by the way, shoot you down. In fact, your reputation might not even be soiled when we know that you cannot do it. And of course, you're delivering on that particular reputation. You are not doing it. But we know you can do it. We know you can deliver. We see the potential that is inside of you. But you failed to fulfill that potential. Your reputation is messed up. That's number three. Number four, when you compromise on your standards. We talked about this uh, when we're talking about brands like uh, Cafe Javas. They have a particular standard that they have set. That standard is an experience that people want to have all the time that they're having an interaction with Cafe Javas. Now, if the people go back there and the standards have already be, already been set, and we say, by the way, you've got to be very careful if you are in the place of Cafe Javas because standards, high standards, attract people. And now when you have very many people, if you do not plan for this, then you are going to have to be spread too thin to cater for these very many people. And you can indefinitely, you can really lower your standards because you did not anticipate this turnout. Therefore, the standards that you had, the high standards that you had, become your Achilles heel, become the problem that you're now facing. The standards will be inevitably lowered because you are stretched beyond your limits. So we've got to be careful. But when the standards are lowered, guess what? The reputation goes south. That's why you have seen thriving places are becoming a shell, a pale shadow of themselves. Have you ever seen an establishment that was, I mean, was a stellar? I mean, was the talk of town. And right now, if you go back, there's a laughing stock of town. Why? Something happened about their standards. I could bet something happened about their standards. Their standards were lowered. And some, somehow, they are no longer identified with the standards that they had put on. Number five, your reputation goes down when you become inconsistent with your purpose. Inconsistent with your purpose. It's kind of like the promise, but it's on a you know, uh, uh, higher, ast- higher steroids, your purpose. Your purpose is what is identifying you in the world. People know you for this. 
I mean, when your name is mentioned, they relate you with your purpose. Okay, so you've been doing this for quite a while, and then for some reason your name is mentioned, and you you went. I mean, for some reason when your purpose is mentioned, your name does not come alongside there. Why? Because you changed, and you did not even communicate. Your your meddling, your your meddle from one thing to another jumping from one thing to another you become schizophrenic in the eyes of people they don't know who are you what do you do what, i mean you you're planting mushrooms the other day calling yourself a farmer no you longer so supplying mushrooms so now what you're doing you're coding okay you're coding and then uh, down the line now you're teaching children mannerisms who are you Okay. The more you keep changing, you become schizophrenic. Stay to one thing. You are called to that particular thing. Stay with it. If you keep changing, what happens is that your reputation goes south. When you become inconsistent with your purpose. There's got to be a constancy of purpose that you need to have. And then yesterday we talked about failure to make your mistakes right. As in, you can you just go back to yesterday's episode. It was very, really, very, very um, strong. You've got to make sure that the rights are made, the wrongs are made right. Excuse me, the wrongs are made right. Otherwise, let me tell you something: your reputation is gone, absolutely gone. Today, let's talk about this. If you fail to make the necessary adjustments for relevance, making a necessary, making the necessary adjustments for relevance. If you fail to do that, of course, your reputation goes south. There are very many organizations that have done this. Of course, the biggest example is Nokia. People normally say, the people normally quote the Nokia CEO then, saying that we did nothing wrong. Nokia was the phone that you, it was the Apple of the year 2000. It was the Apple of the year 2001 and 2002. That was the phone, my friend. That was the phone. And it was not a smartphone. It was a phone. It, you see, we had moved from landline phones to these cell phones. It was a cell phone of note. And they had versions upon versions. Nokia 3310 is the most popular. Let me tell you, if you had a Nokia 3310, you walked around town like a man who owns the town. As in Nokia was the brand of the day. Classy. Durable. Sturdy. And then there was an advent later on of smartphones where in Nokia 3310 we used to type on the keypad, physical keypad. Smartphones come and they have removed all this keypad. We no longer type on the keypads. We have a QWERTY keypad, right? Of course, Nokia also had a QWERTY keypad, but it was physical uh, later on. Now there are big phones with big screens. Nokia had a tiny screen with a big keypad. And Nokia says, we are going to continue doing cell phones. We are not going to do smartphones. What happened? <laughs> what happened is that Apple ate their lunch, and then Samsung ate their breakfast, and then the rest, the rest is history. Their reputation and their brand and their business went south. The end of the day. It has been said over and over again about this. So Nokia and Samsung. Nokia at one point in time had a clientele base of, guess this, a billion, billion with a B across the globe. Can you imagine that? It's been said that when you hit the one million mark of a clientele base, you've become mainstream. Nokia's reputation at that time was impeccably sky high. I mean a billion. Then the change came in society. But they refused to change. Today, Samsung is a brand that is competing massively with Apple. They have had squabbles over the years against each other. Nokia? Nokia is nowhere. They failed to make the relevant adjustments at the critical time. That they were supposed to. The rest of the says is history, is history. So the same thing can happen to me and you. I know we need to balance this. Because in matters concerning purpose. We've got to remain steady as a rock. 
Someone said that in matters related to fashion, swim on the current, but in matters related to principles, stand with a rock. Stand, st- I mean, stand like a rock. That's my paraphrase. But I, I'm not saying that you can compromise on your principles just to, be, to, to stay relevant. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you stay connected to your purpose, that at the same time, stay relevant to your value add in life. Do not be uh, ancient. Do not be, uh, you know, headstrong that you're not changing. Change with the times. That is a final way that I, I can share with you if you are going to mess up your reputation. If you're going to disfigure your reputation, stay ancient. Stay irrelevant. Right? Stay irrelevant, absolutely irrelevant with the changing times. Your reputation will be nowhere. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the seven ways. Seven ways in which you can be able to mess up your reputation. Tomorrow, in the episode... We are going to continue talking about this subject matter. Maybe we are going to approach it from a totally different angle, but that's the, that's the case. We will still be talking about reputation. It's an important subject for us to keep. So stay tuned. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.